I am at the U.S.-Mexico border. I'm about to cross into Mexico. And in this episode, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to cross an international border. It seems very daunting the first time you do it. But the good news is no matter where you are in the world, it's pretty similar. You need to do basically two or three things. You need to have your uh, visa and your passport stamped, just as you would if you were on an airplane or something. So that's the first thing. With you with the vehicle, the second thing you have to do is you have to import your vehicle. You do that with a temporary temporary import permit. It's called a TIP. And then you also need to get insurance on your vehicle. Those three things are the three things that you do almost every border crossing. Get your passport stamped, import your vehicle with a temporary import permit, and then get insurance for your vehicle. The fourth thing that you might have to do, depending on the country, is get a road permit. Um, and so that's really common over in uh, Eastern Europe, vignettes, uh, or vignette, however you say that. Um, and then a similar thing is in through Central America. And so that's pretty much it. So those are the exceptions. It's get your passport stamped, do a temporary vehicle import, and then get your insurance. So we're gonna do all of that in this episode and uh, I'll show you how it works in Mexico. And then you can sort of repeat that process in whatever country you're going into. Right here, there are a bunch of sensors, cameras. And so every single car, every single person that goes across this border is photographed, scanned. Um, there's no sneaking through. You can see, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, the camera just went off. My picture will be taken. License plates will be taken. Everything. Yeah, you can see these cameras going right now. And then up ahead a little bit, there are going to be some guys that will uh, look at the car. Maybe I might be inspected or I might just drive straight through. It depends on what they see. If they think there might be some problem, they, you know, pull you aside. It's just like going through airport security, except for you're in a car. We are now in the United States. In a second, we are in Mexico. Bam, we are in Mexico. I have to get our photo taken, scanned again. Entrada. Smile. Hola amigo, una pregunta por uh, temporary uh, importada de coche, ¿es aquí o en 20? Kilómetro 21 Ok, gracias. ¿Es fin de zona libre? Ok, gracias. I have made it to Mexico. I am in a little hotel just across the border. And uh, this is a place that's got a gate and everything, so the truck is all secure. So now it's time to get some rest, and then tomorrow we'll do all the paperwork and uh, then head in earnest to the south. Fancy. Well, good morning. It's a brisk morning here in Nogales. We are headed to the immigration station. That's about 20 kilometers inside the border because of what's called the free zone that encourages tourists to cross over and back from the United States into Mexico. That's not normal in most other countries, but once we get there, everything will be just as it is when we're crossing borders elsewhere. And so remember, there are three things we want to do. The first thing is we need to get the passport stamped and they'll check to see if I have a visa, which I don't need in Mexico, but if it was a different country, they'd do all that. So immigration is the first thing that takes care of me. The second thing we need to do is take care of the vehicle. And so to do that, we need to get a temporary import permit, TIP, or temporary vehicle import per permit, TVIP, uh, depending on where you go. Um, once we get that, um, then the last thing we need to do is get insurance. So get or that is what it's called here. And so um, we'll do that. The other thing in Mexico that's a little bit different from other countries is when you're importing a vehicle temporarily, you have to pay a deposit. And on newer vehicles, that deposit is $400. You pay that to 
uh, the Bank of uh, Mexico, I think there's some bank you pay that to. And then when you're leaving Mexico and you check out, then you get that money right back. And so that just helps people not uh, overstay their uh, allotted time on their temporary import. So we're gonna do that, get our three things done, and then we'll be into Mexico proper and the adventure can begin. I just got to the checkpoint. There's some kind of big activity here. There are a few hundred military, police, soldiers, police, uh, fire people, all kinds of stuff. Um, so they've got speakers set up and big audience. Not sure what's going on, but I'm not sure how much I'll be able to record. I'll do my best, but I'm gonna have to go uh, in super secret mode to see if I can make this work. This is the little complex. It's got an exchange over there. Normally you don't have an army here, but um, bathrooms, copy center, everything you need. You need copies of your passport, of your documents, everything. So usually I would do this in advance. Most places don't have a copy place, but this one does. First, I need to do my immigration, and I've already gotten in trouble for filming. So, let's see. First, immigration, where is that? Okay, so now the immigration is finished. I had to pay a little fee for my visa. Next up is the importation, the temporary import permit. Just head this way right here. It says Odawana, and then we'll go over there. Get all the stuff done. Oye, aquí mismo se regresa este permiso. No, pero aquí no puedo regresar exactamente aquí. Hey, my import is done now. I'm gonna go get some insurance from this lady in here. Por cuánto tiempo la quiero? Say hello. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? That is it. That took about 10 minutes. All done. So, how much does this cost? The uh, tourist visa was about $50. The tax for the, uh, the deposit and uh, the import tax for the vehicle was $450, but I get 400 of that back. And then the insurance was a whopping $320. Um, yeah, this is one of the most expensive, I think the most expensive border crossings I have ever done. So the question is, how do you know what form to fill out, where to go, um, all of that stuff? You don't have to know, they'll tell you. So most border crossings, you can't get through it until all the boxes are checked off and uh, you've done everything legally. So they won't let you keep going until you've done everything. This one is a little different because as you can see, you can drive right by and miss this. So in Mexico, it's a little bit different, but every other border, um, they sort of hold your hand the entire way. The other thing is if you're crossing a border uh, in Central America or a place that you don't speak the language at all, there are people there that speak English called fixers and they will help you out. You're gonna have to pay them 20 or 30 or 40 or $50, depending on where you are. I did that all the way through Central America. I just paid somebody to help me and you get through. For a better understanding of what it's like to cross a more difficult border and to use a fixer or somebody that's helping you out, I've included a link to some of my other border crossing videos in the description of this video, or you can just click the card at the top of the screen here and you can go right to those videos. What I needed to cross the border was my passport, my registration. They didn't even look at my car title and uh, that was it and i needed a credit card to pay for everything and some cash to pay for those copies because uh, you'll you'll need that so that's how you cross a border hey it's mark from the future i was just editing this video and realized that when i was sitting in the car i didn't really give a full description of the documents and the things that you'll need for crossing more difficult borders borders like africa central america asia places like that if you're not planning on doing any of those types of border crossings with a vehicle, then you can just click on the time code. You can fast forward to this time right here and skip all of this. But if you are gonna be doing some uh, more difficult and adventurous border crossings, you'll need to know these things. So let's get right into it. I have a little uh, wallet kind of thing here that I use for all my border crossing stuff. This is made by PackSafe. 
got it at REI. So let me just go through what's in here and some of the things you're gonna need for yourself and for your vehicle to get through borders and some tips that will save your bacon. So of course you're gonna need your passport. Everybody's gonna need that to cross a border. But depending on the country of your citizenship and what kind of passport you have, the thing that will change is if you can get a visa on arrival, that's when you just get to the border and they let you through. It's called visa on arrival. Depending on your citizenship, that's not possible for all border crossings. So make sure you check to see if you need a visa before you get to the border. And if you do, you can normally do that online or go to an embassy and get that done. If you don't have the proper visa, you're just not gonna cross the border. So step one, check to see what the visa status is. When I went through Mexico, that little stop I did in immigration, I did what's called a visa on arrival. I paid the $50 uh, fee and got right in. That's probably 80% of every border crossing I've ever done, but there are definitely exceptions and you don't want to get stuck at the border. Once you do go through uh, your immigration, they're usually going to give you something that looks like this. It's a little piece of paper that says when you got into the country, how long your uh, stay is valid for, all that kind of stuff. Don't lose this piece of paper. You're going to need that when you go to hotels to check in. If there's a border crossing, you're going to want to see this. So I just keep that with my passport. I stick that right in my little wallet thing so I don't lose it. Don't get rid of any paperwork that you get at a border crossing. That is a rookie mistake. When you leave the country, you're going to need that. When you go through checkpoints, you're going to need that. Keep everything. If you're not sure, just keep it. And once you get out of the country, then you can throw it all away. Okay, the other thing you're gonna need for your vehicle is you're going to need your original title and your registration. Generally speaking, the title and registration should match the name on your passport. In other words, you need to own your vehicle outright. If you don't, if a bank owns it, if it's a rental company, uh, you'll usually need to have some sort of documentation from whoever owns that vehicle that gives you permission to take it across the border and the documentation that you need changes by country. So you're gonna to have to go to the country's immigration site, their custom site, and do your research to figure out exactly what that is. But for all of my border crossings, I was able to cross with my title. Rarely they needed the registration. Ironically, they did at Mexico or in Mexico. Um, and then the other thing you might have to have is called a carne. So carnets are basically passports for vehicles and for goods. And so usually you don't need that, but I did need that to get into, I think, Australia and Malaysia and also into uh, South Africa, some other places. They're very expensive. They're time consuming. If you don't have to have one, don't get one. Again, check the country that you're going to to see if you need a carne. And if you do need a carne, then uh, I've put a link in the description of this video to a company for US citizens that can handle all of that. But uh, I think for my motorcycle, it was about five or $6,000 is what I had to pay to get that documentation. You get some of that back. It's really expensive, so avoid that at all costs. Okay, so um, the other thing you're going to need for your vehicle is you're going to need to know where the VIN is, the vehicle identification number. Usually that's somewhere up by the dashboard underneath the uh, windscreen. There's a little a number there. Make sure you know where to find that. Also, usually with a motorcycle, sometimes with a car, they're also going to want to see the engine number. And so every engine on a motorcycle or a car has a number stamped into it somewhere. You're going to have to Google it or go to the car dealer, whoever uh, or a dealer that is uh, for your car make and find out where that, that is because that's going to be checked at some border crossings. So um, that's generally speak, uh, generally done in South America and in uh, Central America and in Asia. So you might need to have that. The other thing is you want to make copies of everything. In fact, there's some other things here in my little bag that you might need to have. So one of those is this right here. This is a form that shows all of your vaccinations. And so some countries won't let you in unless you, ha unless you have uh, like a yellow fever vaccination, something like that. And of course your COVID vaccination card. And so a lot of countries won't let you cross the border without showing proper vaccinations. Make sure you have that with you. The other thing that you might need, especially for Africa and Central America, 
are a bunch of these little guys, little passport photos. I usually have a pack of 10 or 15 or 20 of those in my little wallet here because you never know when you're going to a country across a border, they'll ask you for that. If you don't have one, sometimes there's a little shop that will take a Polaroid and they'll uh, chop that up or something. But to save time and hassle, just have a bunch of those with you. You can just print those at home and chop them up with scissors. They don't have to be you know, Kinko's official passport photos or anything. You can be anything that's the right size. So make sure you have those. And then also make sure you bring cash in the local currency in small denominations. You're gonna need this cash when you find out that you need a copy of some form that you just got at the border. And so you'll have to maybe uh, walk, walk uh, a few hundred meters to a little station to get copies. And if you don't have cash in small denominations, they're not gonna have change. They're not gonna make a copy. You're gonna be stuck at the border. There might be some fee. There might be some fixer that you have to pay. You never know. So make sure you have cash. I generally like to have at least $100 in US currency uh, equivalent in the local currency in small denominations to pay whatever I need to pay. Or if I get stuck at the border and I have to sleep somewhere, if you don't have a tent or something to sleep in, um, and sometimes it's not secure, you'll have to pay to stay at a hotel or something. And uh, a lot of times they won't take anything but cash. Make sure you have cash, make sure you have cash. Also make sure you have cash in small denominations. Uh, that will bite you if you don't have that. Another little tip is if you're going through Central America or Asia and you're hiring a fixer, a person to help you out, generally there's gonna be more than one person that will approach you to help you at the border crossing. You can negotiate with these uh, individuals. You don't have to go with the first price because usually it's pretty darn high. If you watch some of my Central America border crossing videos, you'll see how I learned. <laughs> I think I started at like $100 or $80 and by the time I was through Central America, I was paying uh, 20 or $10 for the fixer. So learn how to negotiate with those. Don't take the first offer. It's okay to talk to several different people. If, they, uh, if you feel like you're being pressured, walk away and come back a few minutes later. Um, don't, don't, uh, uh, don't feel pressured to pay more than you absolutely need to. And on the flip side of that, pay the fixer what they're worth. So if they really helped you out and you said you're gonna pay them $10, maybe pay them 20 or 30 or 40 to help them out. That's how they make their living. Most of them are very honest, and so uh, treat them fairly and properly. Okay, the other thing that you want to do at the end of the process, once you're crossed the border, once you're in to whatever country that you're into, take uh, and make copies of all the documentation that you have. You can just take photos with your phone. Um, it doesn't matter. You just wanna have a backup, so if you lose those documents, you have something to show when you leave the country because generally speaking you have to show the documents that you came into the country with when you leave the country so they can make sure that you're leaving with the same vehicle that you entered with they can stamp you out all kinds of things so everything that you get keep it until you get across the border it might be a bunch of documents but that's okay you need to have those and just for security's sake take pictures so if you lose your bag if something gets stolen um, if something happens that you just some unforeseen thing you have backups of all of that stuff some border crossings don't have customs and immigration offices next to each other so you'll be in limbo for a little bit so for example here in ecuador you're going to go through the immigration and customs office just a few miles from the border then you'll have to drive along the road for a few kilometers until you get to the next immigration and customs office for peru and then you'll finish all your importing and everything there so there's a bit of limbo and that's common across the world no need to stress about it so that's the more advanced version of what you need to cross a border i hope this helps out now back to past mark the only other thing to remember is when you leave a country you do the same thing in reverse so you stamp out through immigration you go out and you get your refund or you uh cancel your temporary import so they know you've left the country um, your insurance you don't have to do anything and then you cross the border and then you start all over again go to immigration get stamped in go to the aduana or customs and you get your import temporary import import permit and then walk a few feet and find somebody selling insurance you get that and then you're on your way you go to the next country you stamp out of immigration you cancel your import permit cross the border and it just happens over and over and over again. 
Of course, in some countries, there are extra steps to get a road permit, but you'll know that because they'll make you do it before you leave the border area. And then in Eastern Europe, you'll have to get a vignette. Um, and uh, those you'll see along the roadside. In fact, there's a really cool video about the vignettes in Eastern Europe, and I'll just put a link in the description of this video about that and how you can avoid getting scammed. Um, and that's it. This video has been really fun. I hope it has helped you out. The next thing I want to do uh, in a future video is talk about how to transport your car or motorcycle by boat or plane, um, getting it from continent to continent where you can't cross a border like the Darien Gap or between oceans, things like that. And so watch out for that. I will be posting all those instructions with links to people that can uh, transport your vehicle for you. And so that's coming in a future episode. Thanks so much for joining me. Make sure you click on the subscribe, turn on the bell, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next episode.